welcome back to the board drill podcast as always i'm your host kyle bradburn and with me is my co-host matt dixon tonight we have another special guest it's sean cooley the offensive coordinator and associate head coach at hickston high school or hickson i can never say that right high school <laughs> in tennessee so coach welcome to the show appreciate it guys thanks for having me on <laughs> yeah yeah it's the uh, the soundboard. It works sixty percent of the time, every time. Every time, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> got to make a quick shout out to my boy Armani Perez. No one will get this reference, but got wearing my Hawks gear tonight for you, Armani. So I can't wait to clip that and send it to you. So tonight, Coach Cooley is going to talk about his punch and pace offensive system. I know we're going to talk a little bit of how you do your wristband and in your mm -hmm. play calls and your insulation. And then some screen game stuff. So I'm excited for it. Um, it's my nightmare. I'm a big blitz guy on DC uh, when I'm a DC. So the thought of people throwing screens terrifies me in my sleep. So this is two nights in a row. I had counter last night. That's terrifying. And now I get screen games. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete both these episodes so no one ever sees. But coach, go ahead and kick us off. And we're going to hand it over to you. And you can go ahead and share the screen. Okay. Cool, share, sorry. Yep, I got you. Um, I'm not going to introduce myself a whole lot. You did a good job with that. I'll just say I'm, I'm the offensive coordinator and associate head coach at Hickson High School, just like you said. Um, so I'm just going to go go ahead and get right into uh, the PowerPoint here. So <laughs> the way we like to do it. That's it, man. That's that's. I, I notice every time I listen to podcasts and somebody's got a big long intro, I usually skip it anyway. So <laughs> you know, that's how when we started this podcast, that was part of it was we were not going to do long intros because I'm the same way. I'm like, let's just talk some freaking ball. I don't care where 100%. you're from. That's it, right? All right you, can you guys see this? Yep, all good, Coach. All right, cool, man. So, uh, like I said, I'm Coach Cooley. Uh, if you want any of my contact info, it's right there. My Twitter's right there. So, the punch and pace. We'll kind of get started on kind of how I um, kind of coined, you know, the the phrase punch and pace. I was just kind of looking for something that, that kind of matches our style and, and doesn't really matter what personnel system we're in. So, we'll just get right into it. So, we're a quarterback centered, obviously. So he's he's the only person that's going to know our full play, and we'll get into kind of what that means more as we get to the wristband stuff. Um, we're versatile to any personnel packages. So we last year we went from eleven. That's kind of what I base out of. We went from eleven personnel. We we did some ten. We did some thirteen. We did some twelve. We did all kinds of stuff, um, but didn't change kind of the style of how we played. It's kind of built on trying to dominate the box. Uh, physical toughness and just really trying to get our receivers as wide as possible. And obviously that's quarterback dependent on, on how, how strong your quarterback's arm is and how accurate he is on those long throws to the sidelines. Um, so we want to get them as far as we can out just so we can uh, use as much of the field as possible, the width and, and take shots down the field. So our punch, I kind of broke it up into what our punch means, what our pace means. Um, so punch, we have big emphasis on the vertical run game. If you watch, if you're a big college football fan, kind of what, what Tennessee does with Hypel mm -hmm. and, um, you know, Art Browse kind of started that whole thing. Cause kind of what we like to do is, is run. We, we have, we have, we really don't have four blocking schemes to be honest with you, but we really emphasize the vertical run. So we're inside zone, we're counter, we're power. <clears throat> we will run some stretch. Uh, we do carry stretch as an outside run i've used buck sweep in the past it's not really dependent on which schemes they are just just kind of what fits your offensive line the best uh, ver vertical pass game for us big play action team um want to throw it deep as much as possible um and the ability to change personnel sets so big sets for us i mean like i told you we used a lot of 13 last year um and it was it was good for us especially in in the red zone um our pace so that's really, really big in our wristband system, our no huddle stuff, uh, multiple tempos. So we're not just fast all the time. Uh, we like to change it up that way, uh, keeps the defense guessing and creative screen game, which we're going to talk about today, which is just a, an extension of our run game that we, we kind of, we have some kids out, out wide that can go make a play. So it just, it just makes sense for us to get those guys involved and tailbacks involved in the screen game as well. Uh, so here's eight things that we kind of try to hang our hat on doing as far as being being a, a productive offense in our system. So first thing, we want to play with multiple tempos, just like I said, where we want to be fast. <clears throat> we want to play um, slow at times. Uh, if we need to bleed the clock, we'll play slow. We'll play fast. We'll just kind of do 
what we want to, uh, what we want to do really. Um, in practice, I like to play fast more in practice just so we get used to doing it. And that way we get, <laughs> we maximize our reps. Um, number two, we want to ability to tr- uh, shift trade in motion. Um, I would say I didn't do the studies on it, but I would say probably 80% of the time I'm moving somebody, um, whether that be the H back, um, our slot receiver tailback, I'm moving somebody in some, some type of motion. And it's yeah, not that's always, coach. That's super annoying. Don't do that. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And, and when I, when I have played with a true tight end, we'll trade him over. Hadn't, hadn't been able to do that a whole lot. A couple of years ago, I did it more than, than I have uh, kind of ever. Um, but don't really have a true tight end right now. We've got a couple of linebacker H back type bodies that are pretty dynamic and we use those guys. Uh, vertical run game, like I just talked about, won't go back over that. Read defenders, and that's just that's not just like reading the end on a on a zone read. So we like to read. I call him the Sam linebacker. We we really read gaps, so the defenders in those gaps. So the end man, we read the end man. We read the Sam, which would be the D gap guy. That's kind of how I phrase it. Um, we'll read literally corner. We'll read. I mean, we'll read a lot of different things with our quarterback. Uh, quick pass game. And our and RPOs as well. So we we do RPOs. I've done it different kind of everywhere I've been. It just depends on what your quarterback's comfortable with. Right now we're doing a lot of pre-snap stuff. We're not really meshing um, in the run game. We're doing a lot of pre-snap. Just see it like access throws, so hitches, yeah. and slants, stuff like that, and just just giving just giving him the option pre-snap if he likes it, just take it. Um, we also obviously are going to take shots down the field. That's a big thing for us as we got guys that can run, and go catch it. And we've got a quarterback with a big arm, so that's something that we want to try to do and just just really stress the defense horizontal, horizontally and vertically. Creative screen game, which we'll talk about in just a second, and we'll move the pocket um, with boots. So we'll get in pistol, we'll run bootleg, we'll go sprint, true sprint out. Um, we'll do a lot of different things just to change the angles um, of how the quarterback's um, throwing it and change change the pocket, move the pocket. <clears throat> all right, you guys ready to look at this wristband stuff? We've been waiting for Absolutely. it, Absolutely. That's, that's, that's what we've all been waiting for, right? All right, so here we go. So this is, like I said, this is a few years ago. Um, so this is not the exact one we use right now. So, Coach, anybody... when it flips tabs, I don't think it's shared. Oh, no. That's all right. Let's see. Share this tab instead. You yep, got that? There you go. Got it? Oh, yeah. Nice. All right, so this is the quarterback's band. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. These are kind of different, so I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna go right here. So you guys can tell I've got let's try to go over a little bit more. So that's literally one little wristband. I've, on these sheets, I've got like four four little bands in one. That way, whenever I print them out, I got four in one. So here's one. Okay, <clears throat> all of our ISO schemes at this particular school where I was at are um, in the upper left. So they start with one, all those. So all the one series were ISOs, and there's some mixed in there because this was this was towards the end of the year when we were just mixing it up. But I try, usually tra- traditionally I have to get one kind of run scheme like all in that area. So like all the ones that start with one. So if this would be ISO. All my twos were like a power scheme, some type of power. Uh, all the threes were some type of counter. Fours were stretch or our outside runs. And then <clears throat> fives kind of were a mixed bag. Sixes were our um, 60 and 800 pass schemes, which all are post-snap concepts to the right. Our sevens are our post-snap concept passes to the left, whether they're sprint or play action. <clears throat> And then I've got a mixed bag kind of everywhere else. <clears throat> so here's here's the here's the crazy, the cool part about all this. So this is all the quarterbacks right here. It's got like the full play. You guys notice there's like yep. a bunch of just full plays. So I'm just going to go to a random tab. I'm going to go to left guard. It literally just tells him what the concept is and which protection he has. So if we're looking in the six series that I've got highlighted, these were all past concepts. He just has his rules. <clears throat> so he don't know what 60 Syracuse. <laughs> is. He just knows this is what I got to do on this play. Um, that's 
stretch and there's a lot of rpo tags different tags on some of these <clears throat> and all they know is the run scheme they don't know if it's rpo they don't know they don't it doesn't matter to them because yeah. you know as well as i do kids literally are just gonna they're, they're going to question everything. Like I was going through an install a couple of days ago with one of our young offensive linemen. And I was drawing up on the board, like inside zone. I know it was counter. I was drawing counter to the left and I had the tailback on the right side. He raised his hand and said, uh, shouldn't the tailback be on the other side? And I said, you just block. Like, <laughs> you just block the guy. I said, that's why I don't give you all the full play. <laughs> that's exactly why. Just um, run counter. Just run counter. Just you're the center. So on back. That's all you got to do. And here's a receiver. They don't have to. Re- they don't, they literally don't have the full concept. They have their route, or they have stock block. I mean, that's literally what they have. So it's like the install <laughs> is so it's so easy to do. And here's the th- crazy thing about this: this looks like a lot of stuff, and it it could be a lot. But towards the middle of the year, the kids don't even have to look at the wristbands anymore because they they've practiced yeah. it so much. They literally know what they're doing. Now, how does this work out, you know, and we haven't gone into all your plays and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or I think, are we? Um, no. When you're motioning and doing all this stuff, mm-hmm. right? do you so, ever have an issue where, like, hey, we've called this play this way, but now that we're motioning, your responsibilities are swapped? You know, are nope. you having to flip out cards weekly? How is Sometimes, that work? okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll start with the motion stuff first. So here's how we do the motions. Last year, this is the this is the – best thing that I've done with this. So we'll signal formation. We'll give them a formation signal. And then I'm starting to signal the motion as well and then give them the number. And then they look at the wristband, whatever the number is. So whenever they motion, I've already got it in the wristband. What After they motion to the other side, what their responsibility okay. is when they get to the other side. So if they're motioning, we're running, running the ball. So they're going to like the A. We usually just do a bubble with the A. That way we can pick it and throw it anytime we want to. Yeah. So he'll motion over and then he'll turn and, and make it into a bubble. Or if he's got a route, he'll turn it and get make whatever kind of route he's got, he's going to do. Um, second question was, am I having, I do like through the week of like game plan, I do make these cards every week because I take certain things out and I get, use some game plan stuff. So we'll install a couple wrinkles yeah. and stuff. So, and I usually try to leave four or five slots blank. This one's not blank for some reason. This is a few years ago. We were doing all kinds of stuff. We were trying to do something that worked, but this one's not a hundred percent accurate to what it actually looks like um, now. Uh, but I usually try to leave a few blank. Then I put a, a few different freeze plays in there. That way we get, we, you'd be, you'd be surprised how many times we get people to jump off sides. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it just, it's, it's crazy. Um, Especially but, when you're able to tempo coach, especially when you're able to tempo them, uh, that, that freeze play then becomes a weapon for you. hundred percent. Um, yeah. And that's, that's kind of, it's kind of how we do it. And it really just makes it easy for those skill kids to literally like, I remember playing, I played in the wing tee and I remember playing receiver whenever I was like a sophomore, I like started a receiver as a sophomore. I was about 110 pounds and just probably didn't even really need to be out there, but I could run pretty fast and catch it. So I'd, I'd line up on different sides and I'd have to remember like the full play. And I'm thinking if I'm on the left side, I got to run a, and then the ball snapped and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to run a post. <laughs> I, I just, I, re, I seriously remember doing that. I'm like, uh, I don't, how, how can we make this better? Like, how can we just like, they get their number, their number 61, they run a slant, boom. And that's all they need to know. Um, so I, I just, it's on a need to know base, basis and I just give them what they need to know. Um, quarterback's the only one that has the, the full keys. He's got to know kind of what everybody's doing. And even the H back, if I went to the H back, it literally tells them right on this one, it's a little different. Um, but I've, I've even fit like on power, like it'll say 25 power and it'll say kick left end. Like it'll, it'll like, and just in case yeah. they, they can't, like if they have a brain fart, it's like, it's a cheat code. I mean, it just literally, like, okay. And that's that's helped us like not bust as much. Um, I mean, not saying we don't. You're going to see some film here in a minute, here in a minute on some of these screens. And you're like, what are these? What's this kid doing? <laughs> I mean, they're that's, still kids, coach. That's it, 100. percent So I mean, they're, we're going to bust, but and and it makes us more disciplined as far as getting to the ball and like not having a lot of wasted time. And once they figure it out, like the kids love it. 
like they they love the wristband stuff so we we've been i've been doing it for for years and it it's really uh i, I don't see myself like changing i mean i try to every off season i try to make it improved but as far as like huddling back up and stuff like we might go muddle huddle every now and then or something but I don't, I don't see me ever like just huddling up and like running the play in with a receiver. Cause I remember doing that too. And I'm like, <laughs> most kids forget it before they get there anyway. Yeah. So coach, yeah. How, how much time during the week do you spend on this Excel spreadsheet? Oh man. So <laughs> it All depends. It. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Um, if we're in a game week, you know, I mean, most of it is laid out. Like most of it's not going to change. Um, I would say most of the grunt work is done like off season wise, like, what are we going to be like? That's, that's, that's the hard part is like off season wise, like what, who are we going to be? And I, I have a pretty good idea now of what we are because of what we did last year and we're not losing many kids. So I think we're going to be about the same, but like the, the hardest part is like going from one school to another. Like you just, you're having to guess and like you, you see the kids. Okay, man, we need to do this. But like you, I make it harder on myself. That way the kids can play fast. And I'm okay with that. Like, and it's, it, it was a, it was hard. Like Colin plays this way. Like originally, like first thing I was like, man, this is a little different. But once I got it, it was like, it was so easy to roll with it. Um, but I would say like hours wise, like weekly, I would say probably, I don't know. I would say probably three hours on that. Maybe like a full week, which that's probably an average. Some weeks it's more, some weeks it's way less. Anybody picking your plays? You're yelling 90 over and over because you're just killing them with power. Like, well, oh, here's the thing. I mean, if if we go, we got and we got some code words too. Like we got we got one word things that can mean the same play, and we got you know we sometimes they'll know, but you you'll know as well as I do. If I'm running 90 over and over and over and over, yeah, again, I'm probably getting my ass whipped anyways. <laughs> they're not stopping. It. Like if like I remember one game when I was coaching in Georgia, we kept I kept running 25 power. And every time we ran it, it went for about 20 yards, like every time. And they came back. We had, we scored, and they said, Coach, I think they know what 25 is. I said, do they? <laughs> I don't think they do because they ain't stopped it yet. I said, yeah. I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep calling it. I don't care. Um, but that's a good that's a good point. Like I have multiple different numbers for like the same play. Okay. So if we yeah. run 25 power, there's probably four 25 powers on there, and they're different numbers. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I like to, I, I try to change it up like early and often. Yeah. And, and towards the end of the game, when everybody's tired, we'll, we'll start just doing some, uh, repeats. Yeah. yeah. No, I was a huge fan of, of offensive coaches that had the same signals over and over. I was a big fan of that. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's one reason I didn't like do signals for like plays because people like, you know, what I do. They like trying to get the signals on film. Like, I signal formation, but I don't really care. I mean, they're going to see the formation for the play anyway. Coach, mm -hmm. in Jacksonville, we would have to edit our film, not cut plays out, but we would have to edit our film to a second before the play because everyone picks plays here. <laughs> um, they, they pick hand signals and stuff. So, you know, if you're in an away game and you're going to send it off, you're trying to edit film. Lord have mercy. <laughs> hey, Coach, it's um, not a huge deal for oh. me. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> Coach, I mean, I've been through several different no huddle systems. Mm -hmm. I've done the wristbands before. It took mm -hmm. me a while to find what I was comfortable with. Yeah. Um, communication being key, right? You got to be able to communicate it to your players and have an understanding and know when they didn't see the play call and right. have a structure for that. Are there any tips, tricks you can kind of give coaches in your system without, you know, spilling everything? on uh what you get what you may coach or do to improve communication well i think reps i mean and not even just in the season reps i mean whenever you're meeting with the kids in the off season i have them printed up in the off season i literally have them printed up right now and if i take you know three or four kids to go out and throw because we can do that in tennessee we can take up to six we can take them out and throw and I, i've got the wristbands out there and we're literally you practice them like literally looking at it, like calling a number out, looking at it, and telling you. And you even make them tell you what it is before they run the route. Yeah. Or and that that's just kind of how I did it. Like, is whenever I go into a place and I haven't been, we'll get the wristbands out, and we literally just like I call a number out, and everybody looks at it, and I make them all say it at the same time. Like, if it's the offensive line, they should have the same. They got the scheme. So if yeah. I yell ten, they should say uh, twenty-two zone. 
Like, and it's just, it's literally just like getting them to look at it and then look up and then tell you what, what it is. Um, and that's, that's kind of the, the way that, I mean, that's not some big, like crazy, like brain busting, like strategy. <laughs> that's just like, just wrap it, just literally just do it and do it and do it. And every, it, it's got to be involved in everything that you do. I mean, you've got to, it's got to consume what you do. Coach, do you make them wear the wristbands on the wrist? Yes, we have to. They can't have them on their belts or anything like. Is that annoying when it's on their belts? Because we have some yeah, kids. It makes mad. I've worked on team. Now we've never done it on defense. We just do hand signals. But I've worked with some teams that do it on offense, and every kid staring at their crotch every time a play is called. <laughs> it's just it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we they won't they won't let them. I mean, in Tennessee, they won't let them like they won't let them do it. Like put it on the belt. Like they got some weird rules around here, but I mean, I get it. Like I, I'm, I'm all for that. Like I'm with you. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Wrist. That's how they wear it. Or they don't like get in it, the game. That's just not, they just, yeah. don't get it. it also doesn't fall off of your wrist. Like it does your belt. Exactly. I mean, it's just, that's, it's just dumb. There you go. If Tennessee feels that way about wristbands, I bet they're crazy about knee pads. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is this is a JV game. I'm about to tell you a story. This is a JV game last year. <laughs> this is this the the they kick we kick off. We we receive the ball. We line up. I mean, it's not like we don't have a full like kickoff and kickoff return deal. They kick it, our kid like fumbles it around <laughs> and then he picks it up and we start there. So we get on the ball. And I mean, and we're playing Saudi Daisy, Kyle. Like, I mean, that's, that's who we're playing. And uh, they literally, the ref, before he blows the whistle to 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 start the start the game, and then he blows it immediately after he's done, and then he points it like number three on their team is like, get out. And then like, they send another kid in, and I was like, okay. And then they're ready to go, and then he blew it again. And he told that kid to get out. They they went through three or four kids in the JV game because their knee pads <laughs> wasn't down. I'm like, are we going to get started or what? I mean, <laughs> Look, I'm going to speak for football players everywhere. There's no knee pad that has ever prevented anything on earth ever. And I'll die. I will I will fight that battle to the end of the earth. I didn't even wear them in college. Um, I was still old enough where you could kind of get away with not wearing pads and stuff like that. Right. I just don't. Now it's like they might as well not be wearing them. It's up on their thigh anyway. So oh, I know. I, I mean, especially if you watch the college, you watch <clears> college and <throat> NFL, they don't have. I mean, they ain't coach. Them. I didn't wear a mouthpiece in college. It's probably why my teeth are all crooked. But <laughs> coach, the new the new pants they wear in college, they don't even go to the knee. You know, oh, yeah, I know. I know. Pants, yeah. They don't. Ha- they don't even have thigh pads in them. I know. I know. So. Lord have mercy. All right, we'll get off my my high horse tangent over here and get back to it. Talk some screen game. Let's talk some screen game. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. So let's just talk. We're gonna start really simple here. We're literally. I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna just start with now screen and bubble because I know I know everybody runs it, but that's just that's kind of where we start. So first thing is we have we have the same rules for every screen, and I call it cap K A P. So all screens are. In our system, they're vehicle names. So every time we call, um, we call a number, and a quarterback sees a vehicle name, um, that is a screen. So that helps him just be able to tell screens from actual past concepts. Um, all the screens have the same blocking rules, like I just said, and that's cap. Uh, there's always a kick, alley, and peel player. So kick. This is the uh, this is the player that's going to release, kick out the first defender towards the sideline. Most of the time, it's the force guy. Um, alley guy, so our alley player is going to release and block the first defender in between the kick and the line of scrimmage. So we're looking at like free on on the way to the free safety, whoever shows up. Then we have a peel player who's going to release and keep the eyes inside to pick up any trash from the box guys, like linebackers, whoever. Um, that's kind of our rules in in our offensive line. They literally uh, we we teach them all these. So on their wristband when it says screen path kick they know exactly what they're doing they go to a spot and they block who is in that spot they don't block corner they don't block sam linebacker they block an area and whoever shows up that's what they have um here's some screens we carry i'm going to add a couple more um so nissan and bentley these are our now and bubbles and that's what we'll start with toyota's our tailback leak we have a couple throwbacks off of our sprint out sprint out game Lexus and Hummer Mazda is our uh, our boot 
tunnel. So I'm, I'm toying with this one as we speak and kind of how we run it. Uh, I've got some film of it to show you kind of what it's supposed to look like. We've got a double screen. That's Tundra. We have a couple other ones. Uh, Benz is a bubble tunnel and Audi is a swing tunnel uh, with our slot receiver. So I'm going to show you guys uh, one, two, three, four, five or six of these today. I'm going to leave off uh, Benz and Audi. I don't have really good film of those yet. <laughs> Matt, I, I think I know our, our question for the week that this releases and it's going to be, what are the best car names you could give to a screen? And we're going to see if yeah. people agree with you here, coach. <laughs> Uh, Lord, I'm probably missing. <laughs> I immediately went Cadillac. I mean, yeah. man, where's Cadillac? Yeah, man, we 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 gotta have we, we gotta have a Cadillac. I gotta I gotta. <laughs> whenever I get off of here, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw one up. Coach, we're gonna get this. Will be the one that we get the most comments on. We'll have a whole brand new naming system for you with cars. <laughs> People will be sending all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna write them down. I promise. I'm gonna write them all down. All right, let's start simple here. Let's go just our now. Um, so just talking through it real quick, our outside guy, whoever we're throwing it to the Z, the X, our Z is on the right all the time. Our X is on the left all, all the time. Um, play side guy obviously is getting the now, um, slot receiver. We're pushing to kick the corner Our H back is our alley guy. Um, so he's blocking the number two, whoever shows up in the alley play side tackle is going to release peel to pick up trash. <clears throat> uh, I've messed with this a little bit. Uh, originally I wanted to pull him pull the guard, just have him kick just to get some kind of influence going. I don't think we did it on film here, um, but I think I'm going to come back to doing that. And we have it just access hitch on the, on the backside of this. Um, and I'm old school, man. I, I don't have all the, the, I love it. I, I just, I draw it up. That's just kind of how I do it. So Coach, kinda, this is the good news because offensive guys can draw plays nicely. Yes. Right. Defensively. I can understand it, but when other people look at it, they're like, I'm not sure what happened here. And I'm yes. like, chaos, that's what happened. Yes, exactly. So this is obviously everybody has now screen, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. And we'll kind of we'll look at some film here. Let's see, share this tab instead. All right, you guys got the film? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. All right, let's see. <clears throat> so, Coach, well, just to remind you, be pretty descriptive here with, like, the layout, the formation, yes. everything for our listeners. Yes. Gotcha. I forgot, hey. forgot, but I'm glad you reminded me. So we're in a trip set here, trips to the left. Uh, we're just going to throw the now to the left guy here. So we get it, catch it, and just spin it. Okay, and you see our number two receiver, our slot guy, pushing <clears throat> pushing for our corner. Our H-back is on the alley guy, so that's number two. He shows up in the alley. Our tackle didn't do much. He's <laughs> He kind of – he just let him – he just literally <laughs> pushed him almost in the way and didn't get up to, to, to peel. So we have two out of three there that kind of did their job. We catch it. We get it to a fast kid and let him run a little <clears throat> bit. So just to ask you, so your tackle normally, if he would have gotten out quicker, would have been the trash guy for that interior yes. backer right there? Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's supposed to do. And I, I'm going to toy with him trying to get a release a little quicker. I think he's a two Mississippi right there. I'm going to try to go like one Mississippi and maybe a half and just see if we can get out there a little quicker. And we got to be better about getting our our guys out there. And we're, we're two out of three right there. I mean, ultimately now, it didn't what, affect the play, but it, we need it to be better. What's your receiver's rule here as far as – because I know obviously on screens you want them to get upfield at some point, but do you, do you what kind of coaching do you do with that? Right. So we – I literally – I one step them, set – and I just want him I, – this kid right here, you don't really want to coach him too much, just to be honest with you, because he's going <laughs> to overthink it. So I'm like, run where they ain't, right? Run where the defense is not. So he's going to go find grass for this kid. Other kids, I can kind of give them a path. Um, I, I actually coach more on tunnel screens of like a path to get into other than a now screen. I just want them to find some space to go. And if you notice here, I kinda, it looks like I'm a liar because we're not, we're not spread out really wide right here. Um, and this is because our quarterback that we have uh, right now, who's got the big strong arm last year, he breaks his ankle in our jamboree leading up to the first game. So we've we got our H-back playing quarterback who did a really good job for us, and he didn't have near as strong of an arm. So we, we just spaced out as far as we could. So <clears throat> that's kind of what we did. Now screen. Go make a play. All right, so this one, this is why this kid kind of just does, we just get him the ball. Okay, it's the same kid. I don't think we block anybody on this play. So this is a lot of teach tape. 
We go out. Here we go. H back just totally whiffs. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. He's literally taking two steps forward. I'd rather him literally go at the angle. I want him to attack the outside. If if the number two defender's out wide, like apexed out there, I want him to literally run at an angle at his outside leg. That way we can get in front of him or at least take a good angle to get in the way out there. He he, run, he literally runs vertical. He takes two steps, and he's <laughs> already out. He can't make a block that way. That'll drive but, you nuts. It, yeah, it, it 100%. But our tackle does the right thing this time. He kind of tries to pick up the trash. He just wishes he'd get out there a little quicker. Then this kid just goes and makes a play. He don't score, but that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good football play. Mm-hmm. Not blocked well though. What's your running back's role on this? <laughs> he's he's supposed to get up and out of the way, and he just kind of gets in the way right there. <laughs> okay, I was just curious. I usually try to put he, him on the other side. He's trying to, to run the, the path of the ball. He's literally, he's literally just this kid. He was a really good player when he had the ball. We didn't he didn't have the ball it wasn't very good sometimes he he could block you if he wanted to but i'm sure if i if i do another one of these and i show some any kind of pass pro you'll see what i'm talking about <laughs> it's pretty rough yeah but he's he's just supposed to step up big gap and get out of the way all right here's bentley so we'll go back to the go back to the slide uh, the slides real quick and this is just our bubble so we could stack them out there and throw it. We can do it out of the true um, slot. So this one right here, we're just going to show just stacked, <clears throat> and we're going to crack with this with the outside guy, and we're going to send the H in saw motion, which is literally just on ready. Could we go ready, set, go cadence? We're ready, and he's literally running towards the Z receiver. And when the ball snapped, he goes and blocks the corner. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of how it looks. We're just going to watch a couple clips this share tab so now obviously before you get started here i know yep. this is going to be kind of 20 personnel out of stacks do you normally throw this one out of stacks or that's just kind of you, you drew it up because that's the film we, that you have uh, on it right now yeah we we like it out of this and this is a big tempo play for us if we get a big first down this is something we like to do um and i really i did it more to the to the boundary side of the field because of our quarterback's arm strength yeah but he's accurate when he threw it but we're stacked up out here. I, I really want him to get wider. I really just want him to get close to the sideline out here. We're not. We're literally like almost on the numbers. Um, but but I really like this, especially in a tempo. We we get up and we go catch and throw. Just go make a play. We get five yards right there on the first down. That's all we're trying to do is win first down. So that's that's kind of that's kind of when I like to run this more as far as just. Whenever we get a big a gain, like we get eight yards or, or whatever, we pop something. We want to get up and we want to stack them and just go. But yeah. we can we can also run it just no, a normal bubble the same way. Um, the rules will be different. Obviously, we just we just block straight up outside, like everybody else does on bubble. But here we got the the motion, the H back coming straight out, and then also off of this our. Our receiver, if you notice, he didn't block anybody. Yeah, is that like a crack and go there? Yeah, he's wanting to run a crack and go. We that we didn't call that play. He's just <laughs> he, he. I'm gonna tell you what he was wanting to do. He's gonna say, "Coach, if we run that, I'm open." Because he didn't block. He was trying to set him up and say, "Coach, we can run that." I'm like, dude, just block. I know we're gonna be able to run that. But yeah, we'll we'll do the crack and go off of that, and we'll run the H back right up the wheel. Yeah, off of that we will. Here's another one. We're running to the right side now. Same deal. We're stacking up. We're on the right hash. Stacking up. Saw motion. We crack. This is a better gain for us. See, that's a first down. We have a big, long run before this. I think we had a 20, 25-yard gain. We get up on the ball fast. We stack them up to the short side. We just spin it out there and let him go. Good play on first down. We get eight. Yeah, especially if they're playing off coverage. Yep. Kind of last two that I've seen. 100%. That's why we like it. Boom, throw it out there and go. Get guys in space. Hardest thing for kids to do in high school football is to tackle in space. It's at any Boom. level, coach. Any level. That's what we try to do. This is almost the same exact 
if you're listening on on the on the podcast and you can't see this is almost the same exact thing we're on the right boundary we're stacked up we're sending that h back out we're throwing it to the guy behind the stack catch it really quick and we gain a good a good amount here this is in our jamboree this is actually our, uh, our original quarterback before we broke his ankle yeah, you know, I think you said you called it saw motion, but if you're listening, I know that this is a motion that now people have coined the cheetah motion, correct, yes. Matt? I know you're a big Dolphins fan. Yeah, cheat motion, they're, they're, they're calling it now. It's been <laughs> shortened, abbreviated already. But, uh, oh, okay, from cheetah to cheat? It's cheat motion now. Okay, uh-huh. there it is. That's, it's finally offensive guys are admitting what they're doing, cheating, so we're good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> All right, we'll go on to our tailback. So this is Toyota, our slip or our leak. Um, so we're running like a vert switch uh, like route with our receivers trying to clear everything out. Got the H-back going on the arrow. Um, our tackle, so our play side tackle is going to be our, our kick player. So he's going to release and kick the first guy near the sideline. Our guard is going to release and take the alley defender. And our center is going to snap and he's going to release – and peel and pick up the box, and we're running this to the left. <clears throat> we're faking, uh, we're faking our play action pass, obviously setting up, and we're going to throw this um, this slip screen to the to the tailback. It looks something like this. Um, everything, and like, like I said, we're running that vert switch, and we're trying to clear out everybody um, in the secondary, and just trying to get a good. A good game against a, a heavy blitzer or somebody trying to tee us up on a on a third and long or something, a second and long, something like that. Coach, do you get a lot of guys trying to read your H, follow the H with the linebackers? See, that's that's uh, I I did whenever I first started running this type of offense, and I've done a lot of different things to, and I kind of hope they do now. Like I, I've 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 learned a lot of different things about like using him as a decoy. Um, for us, we run we run away from him almost as much as we use him in the run game now. So, um, like with our zone stuff, we we do zone and and stretch a little different. Um, so I, I use him less in the run game than I used to. It used to just be like if you followed him, you're getting to the ball yeah. like every time, and that's kind of hard to, hard to break. But we we had I, I had some stuff that kind of figured out and. But yeah, I mean, like, like I hope they do. But obviously, they still read the guards because we're a heavy gap scheme team as well. Um, but the H does—he's a really important piece of our offense. So a lot of teams do key on him. So here we go. This was a soaking wet game. I don't know. I mean, we didn't throw it much in here. And this is a fourth and eight. I mean, we're going for it. We can't kick it from here, so we're just going to go for it. We got trips up to the top, uh, up to the right. So we're on the right hash. We got formation into the boundary, and we're going to run our Toyota screen. So they 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 didn't bring a lot. I mean, they brought five. But the thing about these these guys is they everybody runs upfield on their defense. Yeah. that's something that we we figured out quick. Is like they're not even they're not even playing technique. Like they're just like who can get to the quarterback first, like on every play. Yeah. So we ran a lot of counter. We ran a lot of screens. Um, we almost slip and fall right there, and he almost drops it. But he 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 makes a good play right there. He didn't. He our tailback literally didn't go where he was supposed to go. <laughs> he catches it like he. I want him out to the left. You can kind of see we're we're talking about out to the left and where the space is, and he can cut behind him after that. He kind of just catches it and goes straight, makes a guy miss, and gets the first down, which is a really good out of him as far as just effort like getting the first down, but it's not really where the play is designed to go. You can kind of see where the blockers are um, to the left side over here. Our, our tackle's a little late. He was, wanting to, he was wanting to hold on to people way too long. That's what I was saying earlier about, like, we're, we're too slow. We're like too Mississippi, and then we're trying to release, and then the, the, the defenders are holding on to him so he can't turn him loose. Like, I, I need him to release quicker. So we're going to try to work on that this, this season. Coach, well, do you most, find oh, – sorry, go ahead, Matt. Go ahead, Coach. Go ahead, Coach. Do you find that the tailback screens are a little tougher than some of the other screens at the high school um, level? Uh, they can be. They really can be. Um, if This is the one we practice the most um, just as for the timing. Like 
our receiver stuff is a little easier because they can they can take their certain amount of steps and we can time it up. It's just like quick game pass. Like you can you can make it match. Yeah. Uh, the tailback stuff because you never know if somebody's just going to come through and and tackle the tailback or like hold on to him and it's kind of over, right? So it, it 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 does take the most work for sure. Um, we we ran it pretty well last year, and that's that's a testament to we we got blitzed a lot. Like I mean, we just did, um, because we ran the ball really well, and teams wanted to get us in a third and long to to throw it because they knew our quarterback our starting quarterback had been out for the year. Yeah. So, but, but our kid, our kid playing quarterback did a heck of a job last year. I think, I, I, I think he has the most passing yards in school history. Wow. Like, not like from last year. And that's not saying a lot. I mean, he only threw for about, I think 1400 yards, but um, this is a, this is a place that never really threw the ball much. Yeah. Um, traditionally wing T kind of deal. So I'm pretty sure he has <laughs> the most passing yards in school history from last year. Um, did a really good job and most a lot of it was screens here we go again this one's set up a little better and we kind of do what we're supposed to so this one's different in the fact that we're motioning here so we're motioning the uh, a from the left to the right and we're going to end up running the switch because uh, i wanted to run those guys you'll see kind of the secondary kind of run them he didn't he didn't follow him fully but they played a lot of man so that's kind of what we, we build in for that week is just try to run him across, and then we're going to throw the, the screen back to the left side. Um, so here we go. Let's watch it. This is a better job um, of the tailback getting to the left side of the field. Um, our tackle, I wish I could tell you what he's doing. <laughs> I mean, I really do. He, he does, like, I, I wish I could tell you. I could tell you what he was doing Monday. And film, he was taking a butt chewing. That's exactly what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, coach. Look at the linebackers. Look at the linebackers take off, bringing the jet the jet sweep yes. style motion across, and yes. t- sending the H out there. Those linebackers are ready to go. Hundred percent. And we ran, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> we ran jet sweep two or three times before we ran this on purpose. Um, and this is the exact way we run jet sweep. Right, we got the sniffer to the right, we got the tailback to the right side. And we run jet this way. And we try to snap it, if you notice, before. That way it looks like jet's getting there. But he don't. We set the screen up. Our tailback makes a good play. Our center or our guard's the only one that really got out there and blocked. And our center's out there in the mix now. But our tackle, he he's – yeah, he took a butt chew. And he did not want to be in film on Monday. <laughs> good play regardless. Same setup here, middle of the field against a different team. Uh, we're doing the same deal with our motion. So we're motioning him across, looking like jet sweep. Let him get across, second and long, set it up. All right, so everybody gets to where they're supposed to be. Let's see if we block anybody. Tailback sees. I'm going to tell you right now, this kid's vision was incredible. <clears throat> like running the football, he he sees the guy's angle and he sees nobody to the right, so he just goes to the right. He runs where they ain't. Again, it, he was he started on the path to where we were supposed to get, but he he seen this guy take a bad angle and nobody else behind him. So he just took matters into his own hands and got the first down, second and long. That's a good job right there. But that's the way. It's kind of supposed to look as far as us getting out on our path there. Yeah, I mean he's got he's got three jerseys in front of him. Yeah, I mean I get that he cuts it back here, but that's part of a screen sometimes as you're getting right. guys in open field and let them right. just 100%. see dudes. This is probably the best one we had as far as what it looks like, and you'll you'll agree I think. And we're in the red zone here, which is actually a really good time to run this this slip screen right here because most of the time in the red zone everything tightens up in the secondary right, and you're more man based. So. Third and nine right here. We got trips up to the top. Um, and we're just running the same play. So this is actually pretty good timing here. And we got our big boys in front. We got a convoy. I mean, we got two guys. We got two guys on one right there. We score. <laughs> Poor DB. Nah, Stop picking on DBs, guys. Yeah, you have a chance. So, I mean, you see... 
just looking at our left side here, we got a post. We got a post here in that corner. I mean, he's not. He's he's out of. I mean, he's just not not in a position to make a play. That's probably our best one that we had, and kind of the timing of of what it looked like, and our guard kind of gets caught up a little bit, but. He did a good job. He went to release and he sees a backer blitz and he just picked him up. Yeah. He just picked him up. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to chew him out. It wasn't a bad job. Coach, you have a center and a tackle 20 yards downfield. I'd say that's yeah. a pretty good job. I think we did a pretty good. Yeah. Excellent job by the center, getting rid of that defender, throwing him beyond and, and, uh, getting downfield. Excellent 100%. job. That, uh, that center right there can move by the way. Like when he runs, mm -hmm. like he, he's, he can, he can actually can run pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, it was a good job. It's a big teaching point we came up with, Matt. It was when the O-line tries to sling you like that, it's probably screen. You better turn around and retrace right now. You still tell yes. D-lineman that all the time. If a guy is tossing you towards the quarterback, it means the ball's coming out. Turn around. If you get tossed, it's too late. So these yeah. these throwbacks are some of my favorites. I love these things, and, and these really came up big for us, really because we had to, we had to change our – kind of our passing identity to more of a sprint out base um, just to help our quarterback out this, this past season. He did a great job. So we didn't throw from the pocket as much. We did, but we didn't, didn't as much as we planned on doing. So our first one, Hummer, is our throwback to our H. One thing we do in our sprint out is we put our H. Here's one thing that you asked me is about keying on the H back. We set our H back away from where we sprint out. That's one thing we do because a lot of times they set the strength to the H back. So yep. we spin out away. We just we just leave him on the backside to protect. Uh, also sets up a throwback. So play side outside receiver, which is our Z um, and Hummer. He's going to have outside release. It's going to be a, it's going to be a chair concept on the play side. So we're we're sprinting out. We're looking at a sprint out to the twin side. So we got a outside release. We got a speed out from the slot. That chair concept. Our H back, who's on the backside. Um, he's our throwback screen guy. Our uh, play side tackle is going to uh, – he's got the kick. Our play side guard's got the alley. Our center's got the peel. So just like Toyota, it's the same exact thing for the offensive line. They don't even know what Hummer is. They don't know what Toyota is. Their wristband says uh, screen path kick. So they have no idea which one it is. They just go do it. Um, center, like I said, he's going to peel. Everybody else has our protection, our sprint out protection if they're not in the screen. They don't know what to screen either. They just know it's 800 protect. I better get a sprint out protection going. Backside receiver, our post, trying to run, run them off. Looks something like this. Again, I drew it up. I'm not a fancy uh, technology guy. I'm old school a little bit right there. So we're going to sprint out three really good steps, sell it, turn around, dump it back to the H back. Coach, I'm just glad you drew six guys in the box. <laughs> I always do because that – I, I've never, I never get, whenever, a couple of years ago, I never had less than like seven or eight. It was just like, good Lord. It was tough. So, I mean, no, I'm I, I, mine's alluding to the uh, offensive guys on Twitter that draw up 11 personal uh, counter to a five man box. Yeah, it's I'm not like, going to I bet this is going to hit for a lot, guys. I, it should. If it don't, then you're fired. I said that. And then last night, I'm like, that never happens. Last night, a college guy pulls up film. The first, like the very first play is 11 personnel and they have a five man box. And I'm like, well, God dang it. There you go. Coach, uh, this might be completely random to the play. Why did you decide to go in a speed out on the backside? Uh, so on the play side, we got the speed out on the backside. We got the backside yeah. post. Uh, so we like the speed out cause we throw the chair a lot. They, we throw the chair concept a ton on that play side. We go vert speed out and we read that corner if that corner stays down to play play that flat we put it whole shot right over his head if he if he gets any depth we're hitting that speed out quick so that's why we like the speed out and we got like the backside post as the single receiver side all right let's look and see what we got here boom good job by the tackle that corner actually played it pretty good. <clears throat> if we if we go back, he just didn't make the tackle. So we go back. We've got our eleven. We got the sniffer on the on the left side. We're gonna sprint to the right three steps. We're gonna let everybody go. We're gonna get on our screen path. I don't like that our center and guard are kind of blocking the same guy. <laughs> but our center kind of picks up picks it up. the The corner the corner played it okay. He didn't follow the post the whole way. 
Yeah. He saw he saw he 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 read it pretty good. He just didn't make the tackle, but like you said a second ago, getting them in space, making corners tackle. I'm I'm okay with him kind of tr- come up and make a tackle and we don't. If I got to listen to one more offensive guy talk about how corners can't tackle. You know what? Corners, if you're out there, let's make a concerted effort to learn how to tackle better cuz I'm tired of hearing this shit already. So we got so we got Corners can't yeah. tackle and corners lie sometimes. <laughs> Love it. Guess uh, guess what position I played on defense in high school? Corner. Yeah, which I played it too. <laughs> I tried to tackle, but sometimes it didn't go well. I got what run over it? a lot, but they, they would too. fall too. So I'm like, that's a tackle. Let's move on. Yeah, it counts. It's in the stats. We didn't score right there, and we should have because we threw a pick here in just a minute down there. We ended up winning the game, but gosh, that was, that was <clears> miserable. <throat> So, Coach, obviously you like this one because, like you said, you're a big rollout team, and yep. and you always leave that H back backside. So, why not throw it back to him like you would a tight end screen? Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, now, do you think moving on forward, you're going to keep this? You know, I, I know you have a little more of a high power quarterback. You said coming back, but are, you know, was this good enough for you that you're like, we're going to keep this? Heck yeah, man! Like we, I've I've kept it everywhere I've went. I'm about to show you some film here of when I was in Georgia. So this is three years ago, I think. This will make you throw up. I mean, this makes me throw up still. Like, and this is – it's almost embarrassing, but it's almost too funny not to show. So, I'm going to have to show it. So, like I said, we're motioning right here. We get to the same personnel. So, we started in our in our king right set, which puts our sniffer and our tailback on the same mm-hmm. side. We slide the H over. We got the chair concept on the play side. I'm going to stop it right here. Mm. Ah. Coach, you it should know, be a TFL. Um, look, 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 we get three. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> clean releases from them offensive line. I mean, my gosh, they're about to go maul somebody. No. Speed, speed kills, baby. I mean. And he turns up like he didn't see him. That's what drives me nuts me as an O-line guy. He turns up field like he never saw the guy, and you know he did. Our oh. spacing sucked right there. Like uh, We're like literally like playing Red Rover. Like They're that close. They're literally like holding hands. So if you're listening, basically too high team, they run screen out the weak side. The only guy left is the free safety, and there are three clean linemen in front of them, and this free safety from 12 yards deep makes a tackle for negative two. Mm-hmm. Hell of a play by the safety, not play, so man. much by the center guard tackle. <laughs> here, here's the thing. I knew this was going to hit because watch their linebackers right here. They were a heavy flow. Yep. Team on every, everything. Them jokers were gone. Oh, they're got it's one guy. It's one verse four, and he makes mm. the play. Coach, yep. I'm gonna give you something that I used to use as an O line coach. My first guy to kick, my first puller. Yeah. He would I would tell him there's a sidewalk right there running along the line of scrimmage. Yep. You gotta run and stay on that sidewalk till you get yep. to the numbers. Once you get to the numbers, you can turn up field. But we used to call it the sidewalk rule. You got sidewalk it. rule. And you got to stay on that, and it kind of gives them a visualization. They're looking yep. for that marker at the on the sideline, and they're trying to stay in a narrow path. I love um, it because it happened to me too many times. That first guy gets three steps out, and he wants to head straight upfield or 100%. pass by the first guy. And uh, you know, I just built it at in as a as a visual for the kids. I love it, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> I got one. This is a little better. <laughs> we get the first down. I think. Boom! That's better. Now we just gotta get, we just gotta get our our guard to do something, and our center. I don't know. Same what thing. Got to pick up the trash, right? That's it. <laughs> That's it. It's why it's why it's designed that way. But we we're we're in a one yard, or we're close to the first down. All right, let's go back. Here's this is my favorite throwback. This next one that's coming up. Here we go. Lexus. So this is our jailbreak screen. Throw them back. So it's the same. It looks like almost the exact same, except this is going to change our H back and our X receiver. So our H back, instead of getting the ball, he's going to he's going to actually release and go kick the kick the first guy. So it's going to put him in a better spot. Our tackle is going to be the alley player. Our guard is going to be the peel guy, and everybody else stays in. And our backside receiver, which is usually our X, he's going to do our a uh, tunnel. It's just a tunnel. It's just a jailbreak tunnel screen. Looks like this. This is the one that we had the most success with last year. All right, let's go look at a couple clips. 
All right, here we go. All right, so we go king right slide. We're sliding H back over. Boom, stick it. Go make a play. It's a good job. We're sailing the speed out on the play side again. If you want to just look at the, play, the speed out, you go ahead and look at it. It's wide open. <clears throat> we'll come back to it in just a minute on a fourth and eight, and we gain about 20. But we're faking that speed out, we're running the tunnel. Not a bad job by our H back getting out there. Let's see if he blocks anybody. He puts hands on somebody. <laughs> so we got to do a better job of chopping our feet down and getting getting a piece of him or tackle. Our tackle gets a he gets in the way. Look, sometimes getting in the way is good enough. Yeah. Sometimes it's good enough. And we, we get close to a first down, if not picking it up. I think we're a yard short. Um Matt, I'm gonna tap your expertise here. Easier for those guys to run a tunnel screen or run a screen that's going to the outside. Those O linemen. Those I mean, I I we used to run we used to run this play same same concept. We would just mm -hmm. fake it across with a running back instead of sprinting out. Yeah. Um, I I so to me, it's always tough to engage and then release right. So on this specific screen, we used to just clean release it. Yeah. We used to just sprint out and go because it was off, off of our stretch play, out, off of our right. outside zone. So we would actually take our outside zone first two steps and try to, like, inside release that defensive end and then sprint yeah. to the corner. But we would, we didn't want to touch them. We used to practice just running around a little cone and sprinting out there. Um, yeah. So I think, to me, in my offense, it was two different style plays. I, I think it's always tough to disengage either yeah. for offensive linemen and then reconnect to what, what you're doing on the play. Uh, I like to the one receiver side the most running a screen there working with the O line because there's less clutter, right? Yeah. You want to remove that clutter like coach has shown a couple times, right. and it's been in all the screens. So I think all of his are pretty simple. It's when you try to run it into the trips or something. There's a lot of guys out there, a lot of stuff going on. Right, it becomes too much eye candy for O lineman trying to figure out who he's blocking. Yeah, yeah. I agree. All right, we got the same deal here. We're going to slide H back over to the left. <clears throat> We're going to fake sprint out, throw it back to the receiver on the jailbreak. Boom. This is actually one of the better jobs that we did as far as just getting on people. And, I mean, the proof's, the proof's there. Like, it worked. <laughs> like, it, it just it works. This is against Saudi Daisy. Boom. Good job of the H back getting out there. He's just got to break down. Like we just got to break down, break down and and get a piece of him. He, I mean, he almost could have been called for holding right there. Got a guy all the way to the safety there, man. When you do that, it's yeah. it's yeah. going to be decently successful. Who is that? The yep. guard or the center? That's our that's our <laughs> guard. Yep, that's our guard. Our center is actually staying in on this one because we got the H back popping yeah, out okay. there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's a great job by that offensive lineman. Coach, yep. my other favorite thing from that play is if you watch the coach in the far bottom right corner, yeah. absolutely <laughs> losing his mind. He gets so distraught that you guys hit that screen. He's absolutely disgusted. Oh, Definitely. yeah. Oh, Lord. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he, he was not happy right there. <laughs> Same Love game. It. So we ran it like one of the first plays of the game, and this is our last play with our varsity to to put 40 we had four i think we scored 42 bam same play and we score he gets in this time good job i'm gonna play it back one more time only thing different about this one is we didn't slide him we just go went ahead and lined up the h back on the left just put him out there Good job by the tackle, just getting in the way, getting a piece of him, and just letting him go, letting the, the kid go run in some space. Pretty good. All right, this one, this next one um, is one of the works in progress. So this one, I call it Mazda. It is our boot sprint out tunnel screen kind of deal. Okay, so i got a couple couple reasons I've, I've thought of doing one this way. So, we're running to the to the right side receiver now, so we're faking stretch to the left, and we're literally blocking stretch. Um, 
our slot receiver is our kick guy. Our H-back is our alley player. And our play side tackle is our peel guy. So we're blocking stretch with everybody else to the left. Our outside zone play. <clears throat> and our tackle is the only one that's going to be in the, on the screen. Um, so we're actually running it to the trip side like you were talking about where it gets cluttered up and we're just sending one guy out. Um because I agree, I don't want to send multiple out on a trip side and everybody's kind of in the same spot. Um, so it looks something like this. Um, this season, we're going to run it more at a pistol, so we're going to try it that way, and I think it's going to hit a little better. One reason for this is when you get teams that spot drop really heavy, um, you run the tunnel right by them. I mean, yeah. the, kid, the kid spot drops, our H just gets on that guy and just literally just takes him to the sideline if that's where he wants to go in our – our Z will just run the three steps up and then run the tunnel right past him. Um, we were getting a lot of spot drops, so we tried to find something to, to help us with that, and we had to get creative with our screens. It's like so we, nails on a chalkboard when I hear the term spot drop. Yeah. I mean, we got it. We got a lot of it. Coach, so you, might... you will not come across a defensive guy that hates spot drop more than me. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, shoot. We drop a couple of these, but you, you'll be able to see where the space is. All right, so we got trips to the right. Going to fake our stretch, and then we're going to get out. Boom. He drops this ball, but we've got a guy on the way, and we got some space there to at least get some positive yardage. That's kind of all we're really going for. I think this is a, a either a second, second down or a, a first. I think it's a second and like eight. So our H back does actually not a very good job. I want him to take, like I was talking earlier, I want him to literally aim at this guy's outside leg. That way he can at least get in his way. He aims at his inside leg and the guy runs around him. He doesn't make the play, but it's too close for comfort for me. But if he catches the ball right there, we got some kind of space to go. Mm -hmm. So we're looking there because he he didn't spot drop per se, but he was getting with that that way. Yeah. That's kind of you can see kind of what we're playing, like the scheme where it's kind of coming in. Um, for I think team. that goes back to what Matt said: come flat down the line, take an angle. Well, you know, kind of the same thing we hear about linemen when they're running. You know, we heard it last night, and this will be if you're listening to this on the radio, it will have been last week's episode. But talking about angles um, yep. when they're running power and counter about get flat first and then get vertical uh, to give yourself that angle. Yep. I got you hundred percent. Here's one when, earlier when I said, you're going to see some, some film that you're going to be <laughs> like, what are these kids doing? Like this one goes for a big gang, but seriously, watch, watch my H back right here. So we're in a King. So he's in the box. Now I think we, we motioned him out. I caught shave on ready. He goes from H back and he lines up trips. So we're going, yep. Right there. Get lined up. He doesn't block a soul. This is, and to be fair, this is a kid we moved from literally from the offensive line to H back this in this particular year. So he he wasn't as as taught up as our other H backs because we switched back and forth because we had a lot of kids playing defense. So he was a kid that would just go hit you, but he was lost. It's like a kickball and high weed right here. I don't know what he's doing. He just <laughs> I don't know if he thought he was on a pass. I don't know. I think I think he read the wristband wrong. Because then after the play, he kind of looks at it. You'll see him right here. He looks at the wristband. Coach, yeah. he's ready for the pump and go. He won to score his touchdown for the year. 100%. I mean, it's, I guess it's my fault if I just called that play. We probably would have scored. But. Coach, how, how nervous does, do those defensive ends make you on this? I mean, me watching it, I see this one tries to square up your tackle, go inside. But right. on the previous play, man, he yeah, got upfield in a hurry, and it made me nervous. I mean, how, how much has that oh, been yeah. an impact yeah. on this play? Yeah, I mean, that that definitely de – that's why we're going to try the the pistol thing. We're going to turn our back. Like we're handing it up, stretch to the uh, – in this situation, be stretched to the To make him come flat. Yeah, and make him come flat down the line <clears throat> as opposed to doing it this way. But 100%, he, we just get lucky right here. Get lucky. He just don't make the play. But, yeah, I mean, that's – that's not uh that's not ideal. We want this this kid doesn't do it as much like you said, but he kind of he gets engaged there, and we get out and kid makes a little play, but we don't do a lot of, a lot of things right right there. I'll tell you who did our yeah, our the slot kicks right kick looks our little, good. Yeah, our little slot 
Now he'll block, man. He's a, he's about five five, a hundred and probably forty five pounds, but he's gonna block you. This one's actually blocked up a lot better, and we dropped the ball. So we got a trips right set. It's the same play. We're running our fake boom. That's kind of what we want it to look. We wanted it to look like as far as the defensive end set. We wanted to pop him for a second and go. And that's blocked up a lot better. Just the tackle needs to keep his eyes, get his eyes out. He was <clears> looking <throat> to peel. And you can't ask him to look in two places at once. But if you're, yeah. if, if the free safety's making the play, then other than that one, that one clip I show where that free safety he gained about twenty yards in like a half second and, and tackled our H back. That kid was pretty special, but if this if this kid's making a play, we got a we got a decent game, and I'd like the quarterback to get rid of the ball a little quicker. He's taking I want him to he's taking way too many steps, too too many steps. So want to get rid of the ball. It's fit up beautifully. Yep, and we're just yeah, it really it. is. We drop it. <laughs> the one time that we we block it right, we drop it. So that's that's about right. That's coaching one on one. That's it. 100%. We don't block nothing and we get 25 yards. It's just ridiculous. Let's go back. I got a couple more. Got a couple more. We'll go to just, uh, this is our double screen. So, Tundra. So, play side outside. And this this is going to be drawn up different than how we ran it. It's just opposite. It's just, that's all it is. So, our play side outside guy um, is going to crack our outside linebacker, which is our Z. Right side, he's going to crack. Uh, slot receiver or A, and we're usually in a trips left set when we run this. Um, so he's going to release a kick. Our H backs our alley guy. Our left tackles are peel. Um, on the other side, or our left guard is going to also peel. So I'm releasing everybody but the center on this one. Um, center stays in. Right guard is going to release and peel to the right side. Our right tackle is going to kick. And then our. Um, our X receiver's got the tunnel screen on the left side. Our tailback's going to swing to the right. And there's a lot of different ways you could teach the quarterback on this. For me, this is the easiest way to do it in this specific year. Count the safeties. Okay, and if you have any doubt, throw the tunnel. So pre-snap, count the safeties. Two safeties, we want to peek at the swing and then throw the tunnel. One safety, we want to peek at the tunnel and then throw the, uh, throw the uh, swing screen. So, like I said, this is just drawn up backwards. So, in this situation here, our Z is doing, doing the tunnel, which in reality on the film I'm going to show it's the opposite way. But this is kind of what it looks like. <clears throat> We've got everybody kind of in their spot. We've got a swing to the left on this one. We've got the tunnel to the right, and everybody but the center is kind of releasing out. So, do you find like, that you like the tunnel being in the single receiver more often than not and throwing the swing to I, I the like trips? It. I like I like I like the the tunnel to the trips and then the swing okay. to the single and I'll show you why on this film um, if we can get to it yeah here we go so this is I want to show I think I want to show a different one first or do I nah, we'll just start here this one this is. This kid out here gave us some trouble, so this one looks a little different. We had to wait. We didn't block him. He literally didn't block him. Our quarterback makes a good play. This outside overhang guy, he literally just steps in the way our h back supposed to get him. He literally just don't block him for some reason. And then our receiver does a good job of just getting in behind him. He kind of goes upfield. He gets in behind him. Quarterback scrambles for a second and then pops it to him, and then we get out on the – on the screen. That's not ideally how you draw it up, but it's a really good job of them making a heads up play. And this is one of those situations where we have a one high, but he felt comfortable going to that trips. So that's yeah. why he did it. I was, we really worked it this week trying to get it to throw it to that, the swing route, because you can kind of see the numbers. Like if we get a crack on this guy <laughs> over here on the, on our, uh, it'd be our, my left, it'd be the quarterback's right side. If we got a piece of him, that corner is so deep. So we could have had some kind of play if we got a piece of him, but the quarterback made the right decision here going to the tunnel and picking up some yards here. Now, And is his is his deci decision just based on the safety play? 
Yeah, for for this year, and you could do it. You could read the plate, the the swing side end. A lot of people do that, um, and that's a good way to do it. But I felt for us in this specific year, as far as this kid playing H back all summer, just making it easy for him pre snap instead of post snap reading it. If that yeah. makes sense, I just I just wanted him to be comfortable and make a decision and not like think about it too much. I uh, just wanted him to play fast, and I felt good at, with the tunnel against anything really. Um, unless they put 700 guys over there, and then obviously we're not running it. But if they line up in any kind of defense that makes sense, I felt good about the tunnel screen to this kid over here. So that's that's a really cloudy one. It looked – the ending result was better, but obviously it was not drawn up. I mean, everything don't go as planned. They just made a play right there. So this one's a little better, I do, I think. Yeah. That was a little better. <clears throat> so on this one difference is you you got too high so obviously per your rules you want yeah. to throw that tunnel on too yeah. high peak peak the swing throw the tunnel exactly exactly we got too high looking at it I, I like him to look at the swing a little quick a little maybe a half second longer but pretty good job by our slot out here i wish he would just stay on on the kick here he makes good initial contact and he don't over he don't overrun i just wish he would have kept on him um Actually, a really good job by our H-back, our number three receiver, getting out here in the alley. That's a pretty good job. We just got to get our tackle out. A lot of that, film for the left tackle on screen game exactly. this year. Yep. I mean, 100%. And that's something definitely in the off season that we're really working on as far as like literally like like we were just talking about a second ago. We'd rather I'm not even engage and just go. That's what I'm kind of coming to as far as I agree with you. Yeah. That's kind of what we're going to come to, except maybe on that slow screen the, to the tailback. That's probably what we're going to do with all of our screens. So this one's like, I don't know why our receiver catches this and decides to run like a quarter speed because it's like third and long. I don't know what he's trying to do, but we set this <sighs> thing up. This is, Look at the Talk about dude. not handling FIB well. Uh, Guys, if you're listening on the podcast, yeah, they're kind of kind of trips FIB. It's it's on the line. It could be near the middle of the field, and they are two over three with two linebackers in the box, and they have their nickel to the field, so they are three over one to the field. Yikes! Yes, yes. and this is why we ran this play. <laughs> yeah. Oh Lord! And then our fastest kid on the field runs so slow. <laughs> Don't know what, I have no idea what he's doing. Like go, and you'll get the first down. But he did. We had it set up. We gained some yards on it. I mean, it was third in like California, right there. So, yeah. To be honest, dude, sometimes too much space messes with the offense too. Yeah, no. He was like, I, I have like three different places I can go. Which one do I go? Oh, I'm tackled. That's kind of how that went. All right, here we go. I promise we throw the we throw the swing too. I mean, these are all just tunnels. But I promise I'm gonna get to one without the swing. This is not the this is not the one though. So again, a one high look here. Yeah, he just like again like he we 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 were so good at like throwing the tunnel. He just wanted to throw the tunnel. Yeah, I told him you're never wrong. Never wrong, and I think one reason is because we he didn't feel comfortable about getting a crack out here. Which he some sometimes because he he would always come to me he didn't think because he we threw the swing a couple times early in the year and the the guy that was cracking out there didn't get a, the whole piece of him and our tailback kind of got blew up and he wasn't he wasn't very comfortable throwing it over there unless he knew that we were going to get to that linebacker so I don't know if he's looking at him and thinking yeah I'm going to throw the tunnel that's probably what he's doing <clears throat> but either way throw the tunnel to the trips. Get a first down. Just wish the H back would get a little bit flatter, like we've talked about. Just get a little flatter, get get at the outside hip, get a piece of him, take him to where he didn't make the play, but he could have if he's a little better athletically. Coach, I got great but, news. The tackle got out on this one. He did. <laughs> you know why? Because that's a different tackle. <laughs> that's our sophomore we put in. He didn't he's out there, he in yeah, the way. but he's getting in the way. He's trying to pick up trash coach. That's, that's what it's supposed that's... to look like, except yeah. for the last part where he whiffed. But if you're, whiffed, 
yeah, if you're whiffing uh, 10 yards down the field, I think it's going to end up being a pretty good play. Yeah. I think this is the last one that I'm going to show where this is why I love this. I love this kid playing quarterback, and he, he'll, he'll tell you the same thing. This is why we didn't do the wide splits. This is our second game of the year. Watch how long it takes this ball to get out there. Trips left. <laughs> Moonshot out there. It is like he, he's, and he's a third baseman. Like, what are we doing uh, here? Like, you got to, like, can't play on the infield grass all the time. You got to play a little deep. You're going to have to get his arm to get to the first base. That's dangerous. He, yeah. He get, I know. That's why I'm like, yeah, maybe we're going to tighten up a little bit. Yeah. But we catch it and we're blocking. We're blocking our hind end, hind ends off out there. Whew. Yeah, we're blocking. That's I like that. That's teach tape. That's one reason I put it on there is because of the effort. Yeah. I mean, we're blocking dudes out there. Our tackle trying to get out there. He's just watching the play. We need to get him a ticket to the game. Just watching it. This is what I was talking about out here. By uh, they're, they're, This is a too high team, but as far as our, our, our crack on the other side, like – Stuff like this was happening and like getting blown up, so he wasn't feeling it. And they're too high anyway. They were this was a true cover two team, <clears throat> they wasn't playing cover two to the trips, but yeah. they would play it, they would play a version of it on the back side, like a quarter, quarter, half kind of deal. All right, y'all want to see the swing? Here it comes. We're going to throw the swing. This is our QB one before injury. We didn't crack anybody because he blitzed which is a good thing. Just keep working, though. Go find work. Just keep the path. Don't follow the guy to the quarterback. That's kind of what he did. Stay on your path like a slant. Just keep going, and you'll end up on that inside backer. Yeah, and you definitely – I mean, with this, you have the numbers here. It's it's more like a kind of a cover three buzz here. So, backside, mm -hmm. you really only have corner safety. Right. The weak overhang is is rushing here. So, really, if, if you get a crack on the interior backer there, and sometimes the corner will follow you, you could be 88 and out the gate. 100%. That's why we liked it against the one high. I just try to make it simple for him. Here we go. Boom. Yeah. Throw a swing. Good job by the quarterback finding it. Good job by this guy. This is why we want these kids in space. He fumbled the ball, but we get on it. And I choose him out when he got to the sideline. <laughs> If you're listening, he fumbles it into the end zone. They do recover. The zone. Coach, what are you teaching your one uh, single receiver for splits on this? Is it just normal alignment? Yeah, we we try to make it as normal as possible. So if he's got a crack, and I try to I try to let him kind of play with it as far as like if like in this situation he could have cut it down a little bit more because he's closer to the box. Like we want to be smart about it. Um, if he disappears, like, just we got to just keep working. That's the that's the thing that just kills me is like we could have we could have cut it down, but if he's blitzing, he's blitzing, and we just mm -hmm. got to replace him with the next guy, and we didn't. Coaches, have the rules changed there like it has here for cracking? Yeah, we. <laughs> I, I tell them. I literally tell them to like, don't like you do not touch them with anything but your hands. Just basketball screening, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much all you got to do, like, you just got to get in the way. Like, you can't, like, we had a kid a couple years ago at a different school that I was at. He went on this on the same play. He blew a kid up. I mean. Yeah. But he, he it wasn't, like, dirty. Like, he, like, the kid was looking. Like, he turned yeah. around right in time, two steps, bam. And they called it back. It was a touchdown. It was a 50 yard touchdown. And they called it back. It was pretty crazy. Oh, we got one more. It's a scrimmage. We got one more. So we're trips to the left. Same play. It's our tundra. We got a single high. No, we got two high. You just can't see the safety. You go, yeah, he walks out of the picture. He's out of there. Yep, he's out of the picture. Boom. Let's go back. Left tackle gets there and stops. <laughs> yep, he was all the way out there. He's a he was a senior, so he won't have to he won't have to do that anymore. <laughs> our left guard, our left guard, we just we murders spent, a kid here. He does, and this is this is one of my favorite kids we got. He's a sophomore. He just 
He just Ooh. absolutely just ate that guy's lunch. Let's look at the perimeter here. Let's look at our slot going to to block. I wish he. I wish he'd get a little, little closer to him before he started chopping down like that. I'm yeah. alright with him doing that in front of him to make sure he don't, he don't make the tackle. But let's get out there a little bit. And this is, this was probably the dog days of August when everybody's. I mean, these kids, they just, and we we're scrimmaging on a Tuesday, first week of school. Yeah, we don't know what to think, but we, we score. They bring it back because they, they said the receiver was downfield when he caught it, but he literally didn't move. But <laughs> either way. I'll be the judge of this. Hold on. I'll be the judge. He's downfield. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to say that for even you even uh, saw it. Yep. Yes, I was. All right. That's that's the that concludes the uh, the presentation there, fellas. You got any, <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you got any questions? Good stuff. Yeah, um, you can go ahead and cut that share screen out so we can get our gotcha. beautiful faces back up here. But no, coach, I, I, you know, it's it's great because we have a lot of coaches come in here and talk about a lot of things, but screens is not something that we've talked about. So just, again, the ability for a lot of high schools around the country to put the ball in their best player's hand on a, you know, a very high percentage throw, right? That's the key. 100%. Yep. Right? That's, it's, that's, uh, that's why we do it. It's, it's an easy throw. And really – really extension of the run game and it's not an easy block for the offensive lineman, but you're not having to block a full box of like dudes. So getting them out, getting your offensive lineman out in space, even if they get in the way, it's usually good enough blocking secondary guys who are usually not as uh, ferocious, I guess you could say is if, if inside backer, good defensive line. So they're yeah. not having to be perfect. They just need to get out to their spot get in the way and then let guys go like, like a, like a kickoff return, just let go. Yeah. And the deadly one is, is the running back one. If you can get good at that, mm -hmm. it's pretty effective. And, uh, cause running backs typically are, are harder to tackle than wide receivers. Mm -hmm. So once again, 100%. you get that guy in space and moving yikes, 100%. especially with some jet sweep, eye candy, that eye yeah. candy you can give the defense, yep. um, helps it out. Yep. No, I love it, Coach. Thanks, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, again, if you want to get a hold of Coach, Coach, what was your Twitter handle again? Shoot, I'll have to pull it up. Let me, let me pull it, it is. Up. I got it. It's at Coach Cooley underscore SC. There you go. Um, so if you want to reach out to Coach, you can reach out to him on Twitter. If you're bashful and you want us to reach out to Coach, you can always reach out to us at the Board Drill Podcast at gmail dot com. We are bored at Board Drill Pod on Twitter, at Board Drill Pod on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. So. Reach out to us on any medium uh, that you want to. And again, if you're listening to this, rate us five stars. If you're watching it on YouTube, smash the like button as hard as you can and go ahead and check that subscribe button for us. Again, it only helps us grow our channel. And hopefully as we grow our channel, we create more content for you, the high school coach. Again, we're, we're here to, to help you, to, to help educate high school coaches across the country and hopefully give you some good tips from other coaches around the country. The best thing we do is bring coaches on here way better than me and Matt so you can listen to people that actually matter in the world. So perfect. Um, Matt, any other closing words? No. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> I love the structure. Sorry. I love the. I have some notes here. Perfect. Coach, I love the structure of having the names all match up in a group. You go with cars whatever it is. I used to do weather for screens, mm -hmm. whatever you do that, that word has to connect with those players that, Hey, we're going to do this. We're working within this group of plays. Yeah. And then once you establish that in their brain, it, it, it kind of syncs up like that. So I love that you do that. Um, love the screens you're throwing and you're getting real creative with it. So keep, keep on playing with it and tinkering coach. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, coach, you know, from the board drill podcast, we appreciate having you on and maybe we'll get you back sometime. Uh, like I said, we got, we got a lot of episodes to film before fall comes around and none of you guys want to talk to us. Anytime, dude, you just, you just let me know and I'll, I'm, I'm here. That's a, that's a commitment, Matt. We have that it's <laughs> verbal. All right. It's legally binding. So coach, thanks for coming on again. You have a great night. Appreciate it guys.